What are people selling in the whole market? They sell many different things. Food and... Our Highland food mission continues in Vietnam's isolated Northwest. Last time, Andrew and I experienced ancient Thai recipes that have withstood the test of time. Ah! Today, we're at it again, traveling back in time as we head to one of the world's most isolated markets. It's really unsettling. It's putting me on it. Andrew, good morning, my man. Good morning, Mr. Sunny. Another day, another fun food video, if we can get to our next location. Because right now, we are traveling through the second most dangerous pass in all of Vietnam. How do you feel about my ability to host the show and drive the second most dangerous pass in Vietnam at the same time? You know, just keep your eyes forward a little bit. But then the camera can't see my face. <laughs> Right now, we are on our way to Bac Ha City. This is a really interesting place. It's kind of a huge melting pot of all these different cultures all in one place. From there, we're gonna be able to explore so many different new ethnic groups that we've not yet discovered. For example? So far, we visited the Black Hmong people. Today, we're gonna be visiting the White Hmong people. What's the difference? I don't know. Huh. So we're gonna go find out. So we are just entering the village right now. Look at this. Half the village is out here trying to help prepare the fields for something. Chị ơi, chị làm gì? Đang làm gì? Oh, dude, they're sowing corn. In most of Asia, rice is king. But in these parts, it's all about the corn. Corn grows much more easily in this harsh terrain. It doesn't require as much water as rice, and it's calorie dense. The way you know that they have a lot of corn here is instead of rice wine, you often will drink corn wine. Which is even more potent. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. Andrew and I are on a mission to discover one of Asia's most hard-to-reach mountain markets. But first, we're stopping at the home of a white Hmong market vendor. Her name is Miss Chat, and every afternoon, she prepares the food she'll sell at the market the next day. It starts with corn. Today, we're going to make, uh, you know, there's not exactly a good translation for the name of this food. They were calling it kind of a corn powder. It all starts here on the mill. And begin. This staple Hmong dish is called men men. I could totally reach that. It was consumed more in the past when rice was less available and more difficult to grow. And she's gonna flip the switch. Oh! Now it's found mostly in markets where folks from near and far can get a taste of the past. The corn goes from this hopper here and then it goes to the bottom of this giant rotating stone. Once it's between these two stones, it just gets ground into a dust. There used to be places here where you'd put wood and manually grind the corn. Now they have a motor and so it's much easier than it used to be. After the corn is turned into a fine powder, it gets strained to get rid of any lumps. Then mixed with water and steamed in a wood trunk for 20 minutes. First of all, thank you so much for having us here today. Andrew, if I may back up for a second, you know, there are 54 different ethnic groups in Vietnam. Four of those are Hmong. She belongs to the White Hmong tribe. But I'm curious, what sets the White Hmong people apart from other tribes in this area? When they pass away, the uh, clothes for the funeral is a white. Mm. So that's what we call the White Hmong. I understand you grow food around here, you sell the food. How did you learn this recipe? Is this something that was passed down from generation to generation? We learned from the parents. I'm assuming her parents learned from their grandparents and she learned from her parents. Yeah. And Andrew, mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. we're gonna learn from her. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, tell her that she's my mom today and that she will pass the tradition to me. <laughs> The men men is about half done steaming. And she's gonna dump it out right here. When you touch it, it feels like cornmeal. It's kind of coarse and a bit dry still. So she's adding some more water and then really massaging it. She's mostly putting water on her hand as it burns. <laughs> it's not funny. That's my mom. So she's gonna take it from here, put it back in the steamer. It's gonna finish steaming. And once it's all the way done, it's ready to take to the market tomorrow. This 
is crazy. So we're at the market now. What is the name of this market? Lung Ping? Yes. Sorry, there's a lot of pig screaming. It's a little hard to hear you. This is Lumfin Market, one of the few locations where you can find several of Vietnam's ethnic groups rubbing shoulders and engaging in good old-fashioned commerce. If they can make it, breed it, or grow it, then they'll strap it to a motorbike and sell it here. What are people selling in the whole market? They sell many different things, food and... This is A, ah, spelled simply A. Today, she'll be our bridge to those who speak only in the Hmong language. Did you get any of that? I just hear a pig screaming. Yeah, it was pretty tough. <laughs> the thing with pigs is like, you could tickle them yeah. or torture them and you get the same sound. It sounds like there's pigs being tortured all over. Correct. They're just being picked up. Why do some people have a cage and she has pig bags? It's easier to carry. Oh, so she just throws the pig in a bag, puts it on her bike and yes. rides all the way here. Yes. Can I take a look at this pig? Is this a good pig? Yeah, it's a good looking pig. How can you tell? A little bit oh. chubby and a little bit healthy. Do these rules apply for humans too? I'm a little bit chubby and just a little bit healthy only. While we've been shopping for little piggies, Miss Cha has set up her stall and is serving her customers in this market's food court. There's a logistical issue in being a food vendor at a market like this. She comes here on a bike, not a truck. So she brings half the food and then half the food she makes here. The men men is made beforehand. Some of her pork she'll actually get from a vendor here and cook it here. And then there's this. This is the tofu she started making yesterday. At her home, all she did was grind the soybeans. Here, she's added water, some herbs, and boiled it for an hour, and then that is gonna be served with the men men. Sounds like a good breakfast, right? Good morning. This is beautiful. This is all food that you've made today. Do you like eating your own cooking? Yeah, no, ma. She love it, that's why she made it. Oh, that's a good answer. Yeah, that's great. So this is called men men. How do we eat that? Do we just eat it plain? Yeah, just eat it plain. All right, let's try it out. Oh, it's so dry. Mm. I don't mean this in a disparaging way. First mm. of all, it's a beautiful looking dish, but it's very, very dry. It's super dry. It's like eating sawdust almost. Like it soaks up all your spit and then you need this. So you mix it with the tofu. Now, tofu tastes good. It tastes like silky tofu, but it is a bit bland. I think this is all the flavor right here. What is going on in this bowl? It's truly so. I'm gonna get a nice healthy chunk. Of yeah, me too. All right, cheers. Mmm, okay, so that's all the flavor. That is spicy. My mouth is ablaze already. I went from like no flavor to flavor overload. <laughs> Man, if you just ate that alone or ate that alone, you'd be so disappointed about the combination. That's right. Here, this is the star, the trotters. How does she prepare these? After the pork trotters are boiled for two hours, she cuts them into thin slices and seasons the meat with her secret spices and lime leaves. Mmm. That is crazy good. I can't believe how tender the trotter's gotten. Yeah, these are great. It's a real hearty breakfast. You'd be full all day. I think that's the point. How many years have you been working here selling? It's around 20 years. 20 years is a long time. How has the market changed over the 20 years? She say it's changing a lot. Every year it's just growing bigger and bigger. And more people sell it. More people, more selling. Mm. From here, we're going to meet a cultural guru. So he's going to show us some of his traditions and talk about how they can be preserved into the future. There's one problem. I feel like we should bring a gift. What is like a bomb gift? You bring a bottle of uh, rice wine or uh, some meats. What about a pig? That would be super happy, but it's a little bit too much. Let's see. Are we going to find that balance or are we just going to blow this guy away? Maybe we blow this guy away. While Sunny is off doing whatever Sunny's doing, I have been tasked with buying gifts for our white mom cultural guru. We're here in what is clearly the alcohol section. Can I try some of this? While Andrew is shopping for gifts, I'm taking a look at what else this market has to offer. Ooh, that's got some punch. The average family in this area is making two to three hundred dollars a month. So that means they really need to be careful with their spending. But a lot of the stuff at this market is actually pretty inexpensive. Oh, she's gonna get a drink as well. <laughs> oh, that's great. I have no idea what that means, but I'll take it. Exhibit one, the honeycomb sandal. When you're up here in the north, even when it's cold, you see about half the people wearing these sandals. And that's because they cost about $1. Super affordable. I just paid a little over $10 for this whole thing. I think that's a pretty good deal. Let's see what else we can find. What we found out is giving a pig as a gift is a little bit too much. 
but I think a chicken could be a pretty good compromise. So for items that people can't get from a big manufacturer, people will just make locally here. For example, this. Any ideas? Hmm? Mokongat, the banyu. My mini mokong. 70,000, I think. Can we take a look? Ah, homemade cowbell. One dollar. Okay, so this is 70,000. That's like three or four dollars for a chicken. That's a pretty good deal, I think. This guy comes in at about ten dollars. It's not bad. Are we gonna weigh it? I thought this was by chicken. I don't know why we're getting a weight. What is this for? This is like a Mortal Kombat weapon. Okay, I was wrong here the whole time. Apparently it's per kilo. Oh, it's like an old school paper cutter. This is how they do circumcisions locally. It's a brutal process. That concludes my market tour. Is Andrew done shopping? Let's find out. Seven or eight dollars for a chicken. Okay. It still seems like a fair deal to me. I was surprised at how cheap it was. I'll take it. Good deal. Sir, put her there. It is an honor. Meet our cultural guru, Mr. Foam. Here, he's going to reveal his culinary traditions, including the most intimidating dish I've tried so far on this trip. And we've tried a lot. We have come bearing gifts. This oh. is alcohol. Oh, what's that one? And a oh. chicken, huh? First of all, what do you think of the chicken? He picked it himself. Mm. He said it's very nice and healthy chicken. Oh, good. I'm glad. I was told it would taste delicious. We're excited to be here because you are a man of both of music and mixology. Mm, aha, mixology. It turns out, as part of his culture-preserving journey, and because the man enjoys a good buzz, Mr. Foam makes his own moonshine from corn. How did you learn to make corn wine? His grandmom and grandfather are doing that, so they learn from the family. Most of the hard alcohol in Vietnam is made with rice. What's the difference with the corn wine? Uh, corn wine is more powerful and you get more easy to addict it. Oh, <laughs> to get addicted. <laughs> It's my understanding that once you partake in your first creative endeavor, drinking the alcohol, that gets you kind of souped up and ready for your other creative endeavor, playing traditional music. If it's okay, we'd just really love to witness you playing this instrument. Can we do that? Oh my. Oh. Yes, no problem. This is a clang, a traditional Hmong gourd mouth organ. Due to the tonal nature of the Hmong language, each tone of this instrument corresponds to a Hmong spoken word. To folks here, listening to a clang is like listening to a story, and clang players are known as storytellers. Mr. Pham's father taught him to play at age 14. Now, many years later, this has become an integral way for him to preserve his culture. There's one more way he preserves his culture, food. So right now we're making some very traditional Hmong foods. Here, a pig intestine that's already been cleaned out. So they've got a funnel, they've got the intestine into the nozzle there. That is avant-garde art right there. After you take one deep breath and blow it into the intestine, then you fill it up with this insane mixture. This mixture starts with chopped pig lungs and fat. Add that to the pork blood and add ginger. Look at that, the whole thing is filling up. They're kind of massaging it, working it out, trying to get the blood all the way through. From here, they're gonna hang this up over the fireplace where it's gonna smoke. We have quite a spread here. We have so many different foods. I saw the blood sausage being made. This isn't the one I saw them make. This is one that's much, 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 older. Preserving meat is a crucial part of Hmong food culture. Every kind of Hmong living every kind of country, the major thing. Once a year, they slaughter a pig and preserve it by smoking the meat. That meat can be eaten throughout the year. Because Hmong people don't have freezer, so they learn how to smoke it. Some meats age better. How old was this one? It's around four months. That's a good amount of time. And some age worse. This one has a distinct odor. Mm. It is Funky. How long has this one been hanging around? Four months. All right, so these are from the same pig? Yeah, it's the same pig. Um, let's try this. No, 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 no. Oh, he's in the driver's seat. I don't know what to do, Andrew. No, 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 no. Let him take over, buddy. Just do what the man says. He's given us some of this. Okay. Oh, I got a giant oh. fatty bit. He's finding me new to I don't know what to say. This smells distinctly rotten. It's beyond fermented. Should be good. To make this soup, the smoked pork trotters are boiled with daikon for one hour. Cheers. It's not often that I worry about getting sick as I'm eating a food, but this happens to wow. be one of those times. This soup 
oozes a musty fungal odor that's telling every sense in my body to be careful. Perhaps this is where the corn wine comes in. <laughs> oh, buddy. Really funky, man. It's yeah. almost just like a cheesy, like blue cheese pork. But I'm down with it if it doesn't get me sick. And I can see why you could have this as an acquired taste. It kind of reminds me of truffles or smelly cheeses. Something where at first it's kind of like, oh, what the hell's going on here? And then mm. over time you would start to crave it. Let's try this. This is the pork belly. This looks really good, right? Yeah. Smoked pork belly gets grilled over a fire, then cut in thin pieces and stir fried with the corn wine and a bit of ginger. Mmm. How is it? That's really good. Mmm. It's kind of like an intensely salty bacon. I'm a fan of this one. is mean, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Man. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Just have some sausage. No, no, no. Just have some sausage and I'll be okay? Okay. <laughs> After the blood sausage is smoked for a couple of months, it gets boiled in hot water to bring it back to life. Squishy, juicy. It does not have a sausage taste. No, super salty. Mm. There's blood in there, but it doesn't have that yeah. minerality mm. that blood usually has. Right. The casing is kind of much more chewy than a normal sausage, I imagine, because it's real intestine. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of this too. These are the perfect drinking compliments, especially if you've got a wine like this. It's so salty, you need something to drink. You need to chase that with something then. Yeah, it's a Down vicious a cycle of right. chasing. But overall, I love the pork belly the most, the sausage the next. This one, I could just go ahead and not have it here at all. I'm with you, same order. Culture is a living thing. From the time you were a kid, have a lot of the Hmong traditions changed or began to fade? It grows. <laughs> it changes. Is it our young people are changing a lot. The isolating nature of these mountains has helped preserve the local culture here for generations. But still, there keeps some culture in there, so not totally change. But as modern life creeps closer and closer, it may only be a matter of time before ethnic minority customs are washed away into the mainstream forever. 100 years from now, what are some of the Hmong traditions that you hope absolutely hold? Ms. Cha. It's the skirt. To tell mm. there is Hmong. And Mr. Foam. Yeah, go ahead and lose. The costume. The must wear Hmong clothes to tell that you are Hmong. So that's why it's important to have it. In their own ways, fight to push that day back as long as they can. Next time on our best ever Highland food mission, Andrew and I head to another market. But this time, the market gets a little too real. Oh, sh oh, there we go. oh man, he's powering it around. Being an influencer doesn't require millions of fans. All you need is this t-shirt. Entertain and inspire at your own pace. Don't be an influencer, be a micro-influencer. Get your shirt now. Okay, make sure your lenses are clean. We're about to start. So listen. Tell us about the wine that you make here. They're made out of corn and the yeast. And? Yeast. Oh, yeast. Yes. Ah, you're fired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like my nose. Huh? Ha. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Connecting. He just blew air into the intestine. <laughs> he literally blew a fart into the intestine. Oh, what are we doing, Fado? <laughs> Now you're married. She continues to separate it, make it all nice and separated. Boom! Guys, another fun food video. I hope you enjoyed it, because I enjoyed it, and Andrew was just kind of lukewarm on the whole thing, but he survived anyways. I liked it. Oh, okay, he liked it too. Guys, you can subscribe to Andrew and his YouTube channel right here. Go to his channel right now, subscribe, and check out what this guy's up to. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A piece. I don't, you never say it. You gotta say, really? say it with me. I thought it was your thing. I don't wanna a steal it. I uh, got the hand action. That's a good down. point. I should just do it myself. Yeah.